If we want to keep Medicare working as well as it has, if we want to preserve the ironclad guarantee that Medicare represents, then we're going to have to make some changes. But they don't have to be drastic ones. And instead of making drastic ones later, what we should be doing is making some manageable ones now. The reforms I'm proposing will strengthen Medicare for future generations without undermining that ironclad guarantee that Medicare represents. We'll reduce our government's Medicare bills by finding new ways to reduce the cost of health care, not by shifting the cost to seniors or the poor or families with disabilities. They are reforms that keep the promise we've made to our seniors, basic security that is rock solid and dependable and there for you when you need it. That's what my budget represents. But if we're serious about deficit reduction, then these reforms have to go hand in hand with reforming our tax code to make it more simple and more fair so that the wealthiest individuals and biggest corporations cannot keep taking advantage of loopholes and deductions that most Americans don't get. That's the bottom line. If you're serious about deficit reduction, then there's no excuse to keep these loopholes open. They don't serve an economic purpose. They don't grow our economy. They don't put people back to work. All they do is to allow folks who are already well off and well connected game the system. If anyone thinks I'll finish the job of deficit reduction on the backs of middle class families or through spending cuts alone that actually hurt our economy short term, they should think again. When it comes to deficit reduction, I've already met Republicans more than halfway, so in the coming days and weeks, I hope that Republicans will come forward and demonstrate that they're really as serious, as serious about the deficits and debt as they claim to be.